Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you a very strong build that it is extremely OP in the mid to late game, enabling you to have more than 50,000 tech in a single planet. You heard that right, it, it is completely broken. Now this build right here, I don't know if the devs are gonna change it, so because of this we are not gonna start a new playthrough on this, but I will just be doing a tutorial on how to reach that levels, speeding up things a little bit so you can see the full build quicker. So starting with the Empire preset, what we have here is the Rook Servitor and Unitary Cohesion. The Rook Servitor is crucial for us to improve our job efficiency later down the line, which is gonna multiply with some very important bonuses. The Unitary Cohesion is so that we can ascend as quickly as possible, but you could shift it for something else, like Rapid Replicators to improve your pop growth speed. You just need to have the Rook Servitor, everything else does not matter at all, as our traits we went with pre the standard picks they are all very good and probably picking every single one of your playthroughs and as for our bio trophies we only have pop growth and traditional because we want to increase our unity from them since they will be our main source of unity for our ruler we have a scientist with spark of genius pretty standard my command calls out for 5000 commanders to replenish our ranks after the recent losses our navy needs you commander to help us fight the countless enemies that threatens our own own existence, enlist today and be a part of something greater. So here we have the start of our game, as you can see the Rook Servitor build is not very strong economically. I heavily recommend you also take the Remnants Origin because this will enable you to restore the Ecumenopolis very early into the game and that will skyrocket your research as you will see. So as a preset we can just shift to Isolationist for better unity output and we could also change the production to Extraction or Manufacturing. I always do the Manufacturing one but you could keep it in balance said if you want to have a more solid basic resource production in the beginning of the game. One thing you should keep in mind if you are playing Remnants as we are is the Ruined Arcologies are very important for you to discover your precursors early on, which can be used as a minor artifact decision to discover precursor insights. Now talking about the build, what we want to do is rush our traditions and grab the Synthetic Age Ascension perk. As for the first tradition, ideally you want to have either expansion or a statecraft. If you have loads of planets nearby, you go for expansion. If not, you go for the statecraft. As for your second tradition, if you are struggling with your economy, you could grab either prosperity or domination. Now, domination has a very hidden effect here, which is the civil exclusion agenda. You're gonna grab domination so that you can see it. On top of having some bonuses to your monthly influence, that will help you expand even further, improves our counselor EXP gain, same line with the statecraft, you gain access to this one which increases the menu drone output by plus 10%, which is fantastic, and on our government you can see the agenda civil exclusion as the launch modifier all of your pops will have plus 15% resources from jobs, so it is quite a good agenda to launch in the beginning of the game. As for our third tradition, it is pretty flexible as well. You could go with discovery if you want to have more research. You could either go with unyielding if you plan on defending yourself against an aggressive neighbor. That is not the most optimal choice, but ideally you should pick it if it is between losing or picking this tradition, right? But for this tutorial, we'll stick with the discovery. Now, regarding the ascension perks one that i really like is speaking imperial prerogative because this one will be massive later on when we have our ring worlds which are crucial for having a massive amount of an economy later down the line and it also helps you in the empire size from the beginning of the game which mainly comes from planets and especially your two guaranteed habitable ones as for our second ascension perk i like to grab technological ascendancy so we can tech rush a little bit better and the third one will obviously be the synthetic age in the transformation situation you could go for real time however if you do not have a very good unity production you could go for error collecting this way ideally you want to finish the situation when you have enough unity to fully adopt the tradition so yeah you could go with this option this way you won't reduce your unity output as for our first pick we are obviously gonna go with the top priority since we won't be producing any type of research in the beginning of the game mainly focusing on unity our research speed negatives effects are not that important the only problem with unity rushing in this build is that you will be stuck with your bio trophies 
so you don't have really a way of building more you know administrative offices building to increase your unity output you just need to grab more bio trophies for this it may be worth it for you to build a sufficiently large fleet in the beginning of the game so you can conquer nearby ai empires and grab their pops for your own planets this way the pops will occupy the biotrophy jobs and expand your unity output. When you reach the modularity and everything always go for moderate resource usage, this will have the resource bonuses from their traditions, just as you can see acceptable findings, giving us plus 0.6 living metal. This will enable us to buy living metal from the market, and later on we can activate the living metal mega construction to build up more mega structures. So with the remnants origin we also have the colonial remains for every one of our granted habitable planets which is fantastic my friends because what it does it reduces the building cost by minus 25 percent so basically improving our early game potential requiring less minerals to build up our colonies the same thing we do with the virtual one for moderate resources and one thing you should keep in mind when playing rook servitors is always look out for the pre-ftl civilizations since they are pretty much free bio trophies for you here they have 1200 pops basically 1200 bio trophies for our planets in the beginning of the game i wouldn't recommend you to build an organic sanctuary right away but instead build up the city districts this way it will give you plus 200 bio trophies jobs which is kind of nice and the bio trophies they don't grow Absolutely up very ready. quickly and now the promising virtuality discovery is giving us the virtual power plant exactly that produces a little bit of energy and dark matter now with the new form event we obviously go with the reshape as nano machines now we have a base production of three nanites which we can even activate the nanite accurators if we so want to increase our research speed now this decision right here you could choose between reducing our transformation situation or improving it i usually improve the situation speed by 25 percent because the other one is just going to give us plus 150 nanites not really that much now we finished the situation this adopted the nanotech tradition and depending on your choices you could already have the unity required to finish up the whole tradition but eventually you will get there after we finish the nanotech tradition and ideally we want to have the cosmogenesis one and the cosmogenesis was a little bit nerfed but it is still very very op and you should grab it for this build now we have three tradition slots remaining and they will be the synchronicity so we reduce our empire size from pops by minus 10 percent which is a requirement for having low empire size later on and also you will have plus 25% colony ascension effects, which is very nice. For our last two picks, ideally we want to have the logistics to help us with the trade, because machine empires, they do not have a very good trade output. And we also should go with supremacy, the best tradition for military growth, or unyielding if you want to have more defensive capabilities instead of offensive ones. Supremacy, I think it's better, to be honest. So this would be our full tradition, not necessarily in this order for the last three picks. You could flex it a little bit have supremacy as your fifth pick and synchronicity later down the line or logistics and etc you can shift this around but this is the most optimal choices for this build regarding the ascension perks we want to have the archaeology projects and also mastery of nature to increase our maximum districts we also want to have the galactic wonders and master builders so we can skyrocket our research very quickly and then the archaeology project because it is the best planet right now later down the line we can reform our government removing the unit unitary cohesion because we do not need many more unity to grab the ota updates for minus 15 percent empire size from pops and we also should grab the elevational hypothesis to increase the colony ascension effects and decrease their colony ascension costs now that we have our empire setup completed we are gonna talk about the tech output which is kind of ridiculous ideally you want to have the nanite research facilities in every single one of your planets now this building right here my friends it gives us plus three of each research and it is stackable so you can build up a bunch of these and they will stack upon each other now the planetary supercomputer for comparison it only gives us plus two and you can have a planetary limit of only one so i'm just gonna skip a little bit and transform this planet into a fully functional equimonopolis so you can see the output so here we have it my friends the 
automated Cubanopolis, this planet alone is producing us 160,000 research. Yeah, that is completely right. Oh boy. It does have a very large upkeep because it is our machine capital. However, you could have all of this set up in one of your regular worlds and just have the research designation. And the research designation at the maximum colony ascension level it will give you minus 95% calculator's upkeep. So that won't be a problem. You can actually replicate this in every single one of your planets. Now imagine if you only have five of these, you would already be at 800,000 tech per month. Obviously, we do have a very large population here, 30,000 Javs, which is our main population, and 16,000 biotrophies. Now the biotrophies are much easier to acquire since you can just grab them from other empires, as I told you before. Later down the line, in the Cosmogenesis, you can just stack up a bunch of the robot manufacturing nexus in your planets and this way you'll have a massive amount of pop growth every single month so this is actually the most optimal setup i have tested everything replacing an n1 for another tech building and it did decrease our tax so this is the most optimal regarding the bio trophies we have those two ideally you could replace one of these nanite research complexes for another one of the empyrean domes you would probably want to do that for most cases but that would require plus 7.5 thousand biotrophy jobs to improve it so yeah now you could improve this build a little bit if you had a better governor here I only have a scientist level 10, which is quite easily to acquire nowadays. However, you could have one of the renowned paragons as your governor. Perhaps something with the bot lord would be massive. And you could even have a bigger planet. We only have our capital size 22. If you put this on a size 25 planet, wow. Yeah, that goes completely ballistic. You could also have some relics from the astral rifts, from the curators, and all of these kind of good bonuses. To improve our tech a little bit further but this is the ultimate setup you can run this in every single one of your games there is no special trick that you must pull out no special rng eventually you'll get to this point if you just uh, stick up with the build and play long enough and our empire size as you can see we have minus 100 percent empire size from colonies which is kind of insane just from the nano tech tradition and imperial prerogative so you can pretty much have in infinite worlds in our empire and regarding the pops we already have a minus 77 percent empire size we could improve it a little bit further with the galactic community resolution decreasing it by another 10 percent so at maximum with this build i'm thinking about minus 87 percent empire size from pops if you could improve your ruler level and their effective counselor skill you could theoretically have it a little bit further but i don't think you could reach one 100%. If any of you guys know a tip to reach minus 100%, let me know in the comments down below. As for our ring world's designations, you can see here this is the most optimal one. Ideally, you could also remove the Empyrean Dome. You could also remove the Empyrean Dome for another Nanite Research Complex. You don't want to change it for the Transcendental because this will decrease your output. I tested it. So this we can have a lower amount of population and still produce around 37,000 tech per month just from a single planet as you can see here the automation building actually provides us with a lot so it is very important you keep the automation so ideally in our empire we want to have the ecumenopolis filled up with jobs and the ring worlds with the automation buildings hello commander if you're enjoying my content please consider being a part of our higher ranks and financially supporting the growth of our navy depending on your contribution you will have access to different sections of our military, being able to command an entire fleet and up to a whole sector in our live streams. That will happen almost every weekend. With every contribution, the Empire grows stronger and you, Commander, will help us shape the future of our universe.
So that's gonna be it for today's tutorial, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I try to keep this as flexible as possible so you guys can implement them in your playthroughs. I don't know if the devs are gonna fix it. I don't know if this build is intended. That's why I haven't done a full playthrough with it because I only like to play with intended builds. So if this pass, the devs give it a verdict that this build actually is supposed to work like that. We'll obviously do a playthrough with it, but for now we'll keep this in the standby. And if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, Tutorial, don't forget to leave that like button my friends and I'll see you guys next time.